try that one more time hopefully we'll all do it at the same time okay so it sounds a bit better okay so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh okay we almost got it we almost got it so uh, we'll try that one last time see if we could all do it start at the same time and finish at the same time Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, Jazakallah, that was fantastic. So, uh, we brought you here to the hall. I think it's probably the first time we're sitting here in the hall. Um, and it's a very important reason why we brought you here because we have a very, very special guest who's come all the way from Northampton. He hasn't cycled from Northampton, he's come by car. But the reason why he's a very, very special guest is because two years ago, he went for Hajj. Now, who can put their hand up and tell me what is Hajj? Okay, right at the back. Okay, good, so very nice definition. Hajj is where we go to pray or worship at Allah's house, okay? Now, you said the, the verb go. Now, how do we go there? Who can, who can tell me how? What? Yep, the front? By plane. By plane, okay. What other way can we go there? Yep. By, an aer by a plane or aeroplane? Fascinating, okay. Yes. By train. By train, by boat, okay. Yes. By ferry. By ferry, very good, yep. By motorcycle. Oh, we're getting closer now. Uh, ye oh, uh, marine. Sorry? Oh, bicycle. Fantastic. So, uh, Maulana Saifullah, who's also an imam and a chaplain, he cycled from East London, okay, where we are here, he cycled from East London all the way to, to, to Medina, all the way to the Prophet's Mosque, and from there he went for Hajj. So, if you go by plane, you can get to Mecca in about what, seven, eight hours, okay? Just seven, eight hours. But if you decide one day to go by bike, it'll take you about six to seven weeks. So that's about one and a half months of riding every single day for almost a hundred miles a day, okay? So, Maulana and Ustad Saifullah, he did that two years ago. And he has very, very kindly accepted our request for him to tell us his journey and talk to us about everything that happened on that journey. So he's going to now, inshallah, tell us the story of his journey from London all the way to Medina by bike. So Jazakallah for coming, Sheikh. Can we have a round of a mashallah? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, that was a lovely reply. MashaAllah, Jazakallah to you all. Lovely to see you all here today. You're a wonderful, lovely bunch. And I hope, inshaAllah, you're going to enjoy the story. Who enjoys stories? We all enjoy stories. Sometimes you get some stories, like Harry Potter. But it doesn't matter how fun it sounds, it's not real, is it? It's just a story. This story I'm going to show you now, it's actually a real story because it actually happened. Okay? And what happened was that, like the Imam said earlier on, Sheikh Hamid said earlier on, that two years ago, I went on my bike and I cycled from here in London all the way to Saudi Arabia where Medina and Makkah are. And in Medina and Makkah, of course, people go there 
for the Hajj. I was very lucky to have gone there. Allah sent me to go all the way there. And that picture you can see right now on the screen, that's a picture of the bike that I took. And I was there in this picture, not me of course, I'm, I'm invisible in the picture, okay? But that picture is my bike next to the seaside in Greece, which is a faraway country. Because I was going to visit lots and lots of countries when I was going to go to, go to Hajj. Because the road to get to Hajj is a long road, lots and lots of miles. Does anybody want to guess how many miles it takes to get all the way from London to Saudi Arabia? Yes? Uh, five. five miles? That's easy. I could have walked it there. Yes? 1,000. Good try. Yeah, you're very close. A bit higher. Yes? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Very well done. 1,500. Nearly there. Nearly there. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. The boy in the back there with the Mickey Mouse. Yes. How many miles? Sorry? 1,800. 1,800. Good try. In fact, you are kind of right, actually. Our journey was around 1,800 miles long. 1,800 miles. That's a long journey even if you go in a car. Okay? And we decided to go on our bikes. And when I say bikes, I mean a bike that you pedal along. Not a motorcycle that you rev like that and you just speed off. All right? A, a, a proper bike, like the one here. That's my very special bike. And that's a bike that I took. It's my favorite bike now, because it's the most special bike in the world to me. Now, what happened was, two years ago, in 2017, a friend of mine put this picture up on a social media group, okay, online, on the, on the internet. Uh, when I saw this poster, I got very, very excited. Because when I was a young boy, I remember at the age of seven, one night I had a dream. In that dream, I saw that I was going to Mecca and I could see the Kaaba, I was going for Hajj. And there were thousands of people around me, I mean thousands of people. I could see the lovely white marble, I could see the Kaaba with that lovely black and golden cloth. I got really excited as a young boy and I thought, inshallah, one day I'm going to get to go for Hajj. And when I saw this poster, I got even more excited because it said here, you can go for Hajj if you want to, you can join this group by taking your bike. And I thought that was really, really cool, okay? Now, when I first joined the cycle group, I had to apply, I had to get a form, fill in the form and give it to them. When I gave the form to the people, before I gave the form, I asked somebody very, very special for help. Who do you think I asked for help? before I gave the form? Yes? Allah. Thank you, very well done. I asked Allah. Because who can help us in any situation? Everybody say it together. Allah. If you need help, who's gonna help you? Allah. If you want some food, who's gonna get it to you? Allah. If you want a lovely warm drink, who's gonna get it to you? Allah. If you wanna get all the way to Makkah, who's gonna get there for you? Allah. Allah is the one who can make anything happen. So. I decided to turn and ask Allah and I said, Allah, if this is a good thing for me to do, please make it happen. But if it's a bad thing, if I shouldn't go there by bike, if it's too dangerous, then oh Allah, please make it not happen. Maybe somebody else can go in my place. And I said, Ameen, and I pressed the button and I sent off the application form and the people who were making the big journey, they got my form. And they then called me a few weeks later and they said to me, you know what, I think you might like to join us. And I managed to join them, and I went on my bike for 50 miles in a big circle. 50 miles in a big massive circle. I was really tired at the end, but my friend said to me, if you can do 50 miles in one day, I think you can cycle all the way to Makkah with us. And a few weeks later, I called him and he said to me, guess what? You are now part of the team. 10 people only in the whole of England are gonna go. How cool is that? 10 people in all of England, in the whole of the UK, the whole United Kingdom. And I was lucky, Allah let me be one of them. How cool is that? Okay? 
And I remember that very same night that I got told that I'm one of the people, I had this lovely dream. In this dream, there's a big group of people, a bit like you, lovely group of people. I'm telling everybody, guess what? I'm gonna go for Hajj on my bike. And I got really, really excited. But then I had to do lots and lots and lots of cycling to get my legs very, very strong, okay? Now, this video here is a video that my friend made. And my friend is that man sitting there with the long beard and the long hair, okay? And he's my friend. He was the person who started the whole journey in the beginning. And his name is Abdul Wahid. He's a good friend of mine. And he decided that he wanted to go for Hajj on a bike and he asked me to join him. So then he made his video and this video shows us all working hard and training, getting our muscles big and strong because you need very strong muscles to get there all the way. Hadrad is the first ever London to Medina cycle challenge. In order to raise awareness for the medical crisis and the humanitarian crisis that is happening inside Syria now. Six weeks we will be traveling over eight countries and climbing three different mountain ranges over 3,500 kilometers. Eight cyclists. and an epic challenge ahead of us. Will you be there to support us in supporting these people? Come to hadride.com and show your support. Can you see this round disc that I'm wearing? Yeah? That's my superhero logo. Do you like it? Yeah! I'm only joking. It's not a superhero logo. It's just a special logo that we use to tell people that we were gonna go on a bike to the Kaaba. So we call it Hajj Ride. So anywhere you see this logo, it tells you that the people who got this logo are the people who got there by bike. We had to do lots and lots of training. We had to go to other countries where there were big mountains and we had to go to other countries where there was lots of desert. We had to cycle through the desert. We had to cycle through the mountains. It was very, very hot. And in the mountains, it was very, very cold. Okay? Yes. Yes, we did see the Eiffel Tower. Very well done. Yes, we did. I want to show you. It might come in again in the video in a short while. If you, if you look carefully, you might see it again. Yes. Animals. Lots of animals. By animals. <laughs> by dogs. <laughs> Wild dogs. We got chased by them. We were on bikes, so we managed to get, out, get away from them. But it was a bit nasty because some of the dogs can bite you. Yep. Lots of animals. Cool animals. Yes. Oh, oh, one, one second, one second, one at a time. The girl in the back, she put a thing, yep. No, we didn't get chased by horses, no. no. We stood next to them, but we didn't get chased. What was your question? Yes, lots of the sea. You're going to see lots of the sea, okay? Lots of sea. Okay, we're going to take two more questions and we're going to carry on. The girl with the scarf, the blue scarf, yep. Yes, we had lots of breaks. By the way, did you know, on this journey, we were allowed to eat anything we liked, so long as it was halal. We could eat as much as we liked, because when you're cycling for a long time, you get very tired and you need more food. And every single day, we would cycle so far, we would use up two days worth of food in one day, in our bodies. So we had to eat a lot of food. And I'm gonna ask this funny question to you all. Who likes Nutella? I love Nutella, okay? You know why I tell you that? It was because on the journey, we had a special van that went behind us and it carried all of our special things with us. So we were on our bikes, cycling, 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 and there was a van, and in the van there were two men, and he had all that food with them. And in the back of the seats of the van, hidden under the seats, hidden, because you have to hide it from other people, we had lots of jars of Nutella. I'm not joking. And what we did is when nobody was watching, we'd get big spoons and dollop lots of Nutella. Don't do this at home, okay? Don't do this at home, I'm warning you. All right, don't say to mummy that, guess what? I met a man today and he said it's okay. It's not okay unless you're cycling far away, okay? But what you used to do, we used to get a spoon and dollop big dollops of Nutella on the biscuits for us, and then we'd have lots and lots of milk, and then we could cycle really, really far, because Nutella is very good for, for energy. So we had lots of fun food along the way, okay? One last question that we're gonna carry on. Da, da, da. 
Yep, you there, yep. Nice and loudly. Sorry? Snake. No, we didn't see any snakes, alhamdulillah. Because snakes are actually quite dangerous. Alhamdulillah, we didn't see any snakes at all. Okay, I'm now going to show you the next part of the journey. This video was found on the news. This came on the news, okay? So this is from the news channel, TRT. From London to Saudi Arabia, that's the journey these eight men embarked upon. They joined another three million Muslims traveling for the Hajj pilgrimage. But while many of the faithful went by plane and ship, Abdul Wahid and his comrades pedaled their way there. The journey marks the first time anyone has made the more than 3,000 kilometer trip from the UK by bicycle. We want to perform our Hajj pilgrimage. But in that, we can use the journey to raise awareness. If we're cycling and we're trying to raise awareness for something, then we might as well raise awareness for people who are suffering in the world in some of the worst situations. The cyclists traveled through eight countries to raise money to buy ambulances for Syria. They avoided the war in Syria and Iraq themselves, though, by taking a flight over the Mediterranean. They set out in the middle of July, with a few bumps along the way. We had some people falling off the bike, we had some people's bikes, uh, parts uh, actually got worn out during the, tri in, in, in the in the journey itself. Ultimately, you know, that's what a journey is. It's supposed to be a bit tough. In previous years, one pilgrim cycled his way to the Hajj from the Xinjiang region in China, and two others pedaled from South Africa, covering 11,000 kilometers. Before advances in air travel, many pilgrims will travel for months to complete the Hajj. Undertaking the journey a more old-fashioned way made it a spiritual one filled with emotion for Abdul Wahid, especially after he arrived in Saudi Arabia. The beauty of this place and the actions that we're going to be doing, the sacrifices that we're going to be doing in the Hajj pilgrimage, it, I'm, I'm speechless when I try and think of how to how to, how, how do I present my emotion? I don't know how. Abdul Wahid has now begun the Hajj in Mecca, but how he'll return to the UK is still up in the air. If he and his friends don't reach their goal of raising $1.3 million for Syria, they might just saddle up again and ride their bikes back to the UK. Yasmin Khatoun Diwan, TRT World, London. Area in France. So we went through lots of countries. So we went from England, then we went over to Brighton, from, from London to Brighton. Brighton is a seaside town. You might have heard of it before. From Brighton, we then took a ferry. Okay, so we did actually take a ferry in a way. We went on a ferry, we took our bikes, we cycled onto the ferry, onto the ramp, into the ferry, and then we stopped, and then we went on the ferry all the way to France, and we jumped off and cycled off the ferry into France. And then we cycled all the way through France. Okay, then we went through Switzerland, then we went to a little, we went through a little baby country called Liechtenstein. It's a tiny little baby country. Then we went to Germany, then from Germany we went to Italy, lots of lovely countries and very beautiful scenery. Then from Italy we went on another ferry over to Greece. We went cycling through Greece, lovely country, then we, then we jumped over from Greece to Egypt, a very hot country with lots of desert. And then we crossed over from Egypt to Saudi Arabia. So we went through eight countries just to get to Hajj. Now, when we were doing all that training, okay, we were cycling lots and lots. We were going through lots of places to get our legs really strong. And remember earlier on, Sheikh Hamid said that we had to cycle some days 70 miles, some days even 100 miles in one day, every single day. And by the way, I come from Northampton, and I drove 70 miles to get here today to see you all. That was a long drive. I couldn't imagine cycling all the way, but in the hud drive, we had to do that every single day. Now, finally, in 2017, we had the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, we were even cycling in Ramadan as well while we were fasting. We had to make ourselves really, really strong. And then, finally, after Ramadan, we was then time for us to leave. 
So we had to eat special, special food. And by the way, here's a little fun fact. There's a special type of animal, and it's got a special kind of bones inside the animal. And if you put all those bones into hot water and boil them, it turns into a very special soup. And that soup is very good for your knees. And when you are cycling, your knees bend all the time, so your knees get badly injured. So what I did is, I drank a cup of that soup almost every single day before I left for the journey. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I, my knees never got hurt once on the journey because I was drinking that very special soup. And lots of people helped me. Lots of people helped me. There were a few schools near where I live in a town called Northampton, and those schools also, they helped me. In fact, I was going to the bank to get my money into the bank one day. There was an old lady who works in the bank. She, is in the, she isn't even a Muslim. She doesn't know what Hajj is, but when she found out I was cycling there, what did she do? Well, guess what? One day I went into the bank, I was waiting for my turn to give the money to the bank, and all of a sudden she saw me, and she stopped the customer that she was speaking to. She said to the customer, I'm so sorry, I'll be right back. She jumped out of her room and said to me, wait a minute, and she went to the back, and she got me a special seat to put on my bike. A special seat made of soft gel, so if I sit in the seat, it's nice and bouncy. Because I want to be sitting on that seat, for several hundred miles, so it's gonna hurt me a lot. So she got me a special seat to make it comfortable for me. She's not even a Muslim, but she helped me. And also there was a bike shop near where we were cycling, and the bike shop people, normally they charge lots of money to look after your bike, and they weren't even Muslim. But when we told them we were cycling all the way to Saudi Arabia, they were so happy, they said to us, guess what? Come to our shop before you leave to go to Mecca and we're going to make all your bikes back to normal and get them all repaired for free without give, asking for any money. And they weren't even Muslim. So lots of people helped us. Okay? And finally, the day before we were about to go, I had to say bye-bye to all my family. It was quite a sad time because I wasn't sure when I would see them again because this journey was going to take at least two months Two months away from my mummy and my daddy, my family, you know, I even wasn't going to see my little daughter. And she was only three and a half. And I missed her a lot because she is a very, very sweet little darling to me, okay? She's my little girl and I miss her a lot. And guess what happened? Before I was about to leave, I said to my little daughter, as, as I was about to say bye bye to her, I said, Little sweetie pie darling, are you going to miss daddy when daddy's gone? And she said to me, and I'm not joking, she honestly said this to me. She said to me, no, daddy, I'm not going to miss you because inshallah, you're going to be back very soon. And you know what shocked me is that she said the magic word inshallah. And I've never told her to say inshallah in my life because she's only three and a half. She doesn't even know what it means. So I never told her to say inshallah, but all of a sudden she said to me, no daddy, you're going to be back very soon inshallah. And when she said the magic word inshallah, I got happy because I thought, you know what? That's a sign from Allah to tell me, don't worry, inshallah, you're going to be back home soon. So I got happy then. Now, then on this day, we all got outside the masjid, we lined up and we had a special photo because there were news channels there and taking pictures of us and all of our friends were there all to say bye bye to us. Very expensive, okay, but they are very fast bikes. They are very, very fast. If you go on a straight road, a flat road, you can go at 25 miles an hour on a bike. And if you're going down a hill or a mountain, you can go as fast as 50 miles an hour. Why? Because when you go down, gravity pulls you down and you go faster and faster and faster. And if you move your legs, you can go even faster. In fact, this is quite funny actually, when we were on the Hutch journey, we were in a country called Switzerland, and there in Switzerland, we cycled past a speed camera. And we cycled so fast, the speed camera flashed and took a picture of us. <laughs> I'm not joking. It was so, so funny. We were laughing ourselves about it, because we thought, wow, we are so fast, we're breaking a speed limit on our bikes. Now, by the way, never try that at home. All right, don't go home and do crazy things on your bikes and say, it's okay, mummy, because the other men could do it. No, we can only do it because we are trained to know how to cycle, okay? The people who are trained, they can do it really fast. If you're not trained, you could slip and hurt yourself. So don't try that at home, people, okay? Now, finally, we're about to leave. Here we go. We're heading off now. هذا الدر وهذه الكلم بمديح
الهادي تنتظم ضاءت بالمختار ظلم وحلا في مولده النغم هذا الدر وهذه الكلم بمديح الهادي تنتظم ضاءت بالمختار ظلم وحلا في مولده النغم قسما بالله رب العالمين فقضينا غير دين الله دين It's always one late one, <laughs> and they're gone. مكة ضاء الكون هدى والسهل تزين والأكم وتمايلت الدنيا طرما. And by the way, you can see me there. I'm wearing a special shirt, a T-shirt. This T-shirt here is the exact same one. I wore in the video because there was only one like this. Each one of us had one of these shirts. It says Hajj Ride in big writing at the back and on the front it says our names. That's my name there. My name is Saifullah. That's my name there so it's got my special name on it and there's only one of these. So I was wearing this in a video earlier on and also I was wearing, you might have seen it in the video, my helmet. This is my special helmet, my favourite helmet, nice and cool and blue, okay? And it's got a special sticker at the back, and that tells you that it's got a special cage inside it. So if you're wearing it, and then all of a sudden you slip, the whole helmet moves that way to protect your head from slipping and hitting the ground. So it's a special type of helmet, okay? There you go, that's what it looks like, okay? I'll put my normal helmet back on again. That's my normal helmet, my normal hat. And if I can find it somewhere in here, I think I might even have... Where has it gone? Ah, there we go. My sunglasses. Now, some of you might be thinking, why does he wear these sunglasses? Is it to look cool? Maybe. Okay. But the reason why I wear these is not to look cool. It's because these are designed to keep out any air. Because when you're cycling, you're going as fast as a car, air's going into your face. And if you haven't got something covered in your eyes, you'll get little things stuck in your eyes, like bumblebees and wasps, if you're not careful. Okay, that can actually happen, by the way, yeah? So you have to make sure when you're cycling, you wear some glasses like this, okay? And these ones here are interesting. I'll explain to you later on. They've got dust and sand stuck in them. And the sand and dust stuck in them is from the Egyptian desert. So if anybody wants to take a bit of Egyptian desert home, come here later on and I'll give you one little bit of sand, okay? If you want it, okay? And that's what we used to use. Now every single day we were cycling, cycling, cycling. We would stop somewhere for a break and have a rest, have some food. We also had to make sure we never missed one salah, one prayer. We always made sure we prayed all our prayers. So we stopped on the side of the road. We stopped on the side of the road. We did our wudu, we had a big bottle of water. Okay, we would pour it out and we'd do our wudu quickly and we'd pray our prayers wherever we were, on the grass in the middle of a field somewhere or on the road, okay? And that's how we used to pray and eat and drink at the same time. Then we would keep cycling all the way until sunset. When it got dark, we would try to stop cycling because it was too dangerous to cycle in the dark, okay? And then we took out our houses. This is our house. Can you imagine living in this? This is a tent. This was going to be our home, okay, for the, for the journey. So imagine those bikes were our cars and this was our home. Look how small they are. But look, when you need these sorts of things, this is the only thing keeping you from keeping cold, okay? I wouldn't want to open it up now because it takes ages to open up and I'm not going to bother to put it back in again, okay? It's a big tent, okay? But inshallah, maybe another time I might be able to show you, okay? Okay, any other questions? Any questions? Ooh, quite a few hands up. I'll take three questions now and a few later on, okay? Oh, we've got somebody, okay, we've got somebody, at the, uh, one of the yeah, teachers at the back. So, it took you several weeks to get from here to Saudi Arabia, Yep. Right? Before that, how long did it take to organize the whole thing to make the maps and the routes and everything? Uh, it was uh, a year in advance in planning. Uh, so it took over a year. And I heard about it when the project planning had wrapped up and they were now gonna do it. A lot of planning because the route, the route had to be carefully planned because nobody had done that route. 
Nobody had ever traveled that journey before. So we had to make sure every single stop was accurate. There's an online, online on the internet, there's a special program that you use, and it tells you how to stop at one town from the other, and it gives you a special um, file. And what happens is, you know like you get cars, you get sat nows for your cars? Okay, you use mums and dads, might use sat navs for your cars to know where to go. When I was coming today, I used a sat nav. It tells me which way to go, which way to turn left and right. So on our bikes, we had little baby sat navs, and I mean baby ones, nice and cute little ones, okay? And these we used to clip onto our bikes and they would tell us where to go. So we put all the maps into them and that would tell us each day where we were supposed to start and end. We would charge you there. How much would you collect? Oh, um, well, I was going to say that towards the end, but I might as well say it. Okay, okay, the end. Um, right, okay, one or two, okay, two more questions. We'll have one on this side and one on that side, okay? So we're going to have. Da, da, da. Ooh, quite a few of you. You there yet? You there, the one, the one kneeling up yet? Um, nice and loudly. Sorry? Did I go over the London Bridge? London. Yes, we did. Is it Tower Bridge? Yeah. Yeah, we went over Tower Bridge. I remember cycling on it, thinking, wow, this is so cool. I'm cycling on here for the first time. Yeah, we went over there. We saw lots of, we saw lots of famous places that you might have seen on your school trips as well. Okay? Let's see you on this side. Ooh, da, 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 da. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, so many of you. Um, there's somebody there with a blue top, with a gap top. Yeah, go on. Did the tire ever get punctured? Good question. Well, the bike that I showed you at the beginning in the picture, yeah? If I brought, I couldn't bring it today, it was very cold, I couldn't get it out of storage, very cold, my fingers were nearly frozen, alright, but what happened is, so, okay. um, when I, when I um, took it, um, when, when I took that bike, that same bike, if I brought it here today, you would notice it's got the same tyres on the outside and the same little tubes on the inside as at the beginning of the journey. For the past one and a half years, that bike hasn't had one puncture. Even after, and before, even after the Hajj journey, it hasn't suffered any puncture. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. But on the journey, we use other bikes at times. Okay, and the other bikes, some of them did get punctures on them. Yeah. Okay. Right, we're going to carry on now with the videos now. Okay? We haven't got much time, but hopefully we'll have a bit more time for questions at the end. Okay? Now, finally, we got to the ferry. And that's me on the ferry there, standing on the ferry, watching out over the seaside. We saw lots of sea. Okay? Whoever asked a question about the seaside, we saw lots of seas because we went over four seas. We went over the English Channel, we went over the Adriatic Sea, which is between Italy and Greece. We went over the Mediterranean Sea from Greece to Egypt, and then we went over the Red Sea from Egypt to Saudi Arabia. So lots of water involved. But we didn't cycle through the water. In case some of you were wondering that we put massive breathing equipment on, I went diving and cycled through the sea. We didn't do that, okay? We went and we normally took a boat or a plane. Okay, now here, this is us in France. And behind us, there's a building there called the Arc de Triomphe. It's a very famous building, okay? The only other thing more famous than this building is probably the Eiffel Tower. And yes, we did cycle past the Eiffel Tower as well. Okay, this is my friend taking a video of us cycling past the Arc de Triomphe. And you might spot somebody familiar in the video. Boom, so we have reached the Arc de Triomphe, as you can see. London to Paris, mashallah. I got it, I got it. We got me. We got Saif for Maulana. We're on the Arc de Triomphe. And at the end, show your name. Name. Know your name. Name. What's your name? Yeah, name is my name, bro. <laughs> you checking the mic out of my name? We are good. We are good. We are just turning right now. I said shout your name, not name. That is my name, bro. <laughs> the funny thing is, my friend asked that person for his name, and that other man's name is name. So every time he kept on saying, what's your name? The guy, man used to say, name. And the man said, no, no, no. I didn't say shout name. Shout your name. Name. And I'm in the middle, and I know exactly what's happening. And I'm laughing so much that I kept quiet for the fun of it. Because when I was a little boy, I had a cousin called Name. He was a grown-up. He did exactly the same thing to me. Every time I go to his house, what's your name? And he'd look at me and say, my name is Name. 
So he used to do the same thing to me, so I know exactly how confusing it could be, okay? Right, okay. Then we went through Paris, then some of our friends, we weren't alone. There were 10 of us in the beginning, but we also had another 25 people who joined us just to get from London to Paris. They just came with us for a little bit of a holiday and to just help us out. So they came with us, we had dinner together, we had lots of fun and laugh together. But then after three days, they stayed in Paris and they then took a plane or a train back to England and then we were left on our own. So there were 35 people in the beginning, then it went down and down and down until all the way down to 10. Because they all wanted to go back home because they weren't going to do the whole journey. They were just going to stay for a short while. Only 10 of us are going to do the rest of the journey. So we had to carry on now. It was a bit empty and lonely now, but we had to carry on. All right? So we carried on. And we, did, we got up to a few little fun things while we were in France. So here we are, here's my friends having a bit of fun. Enjoy. Come. On your bike, bye! Bye! Bike! <laughs> So the scenery has started to change into rolling hills, which means a bit more work. Every single night we stopped and then in the morning we'd make a little campfire like you do in, in camping and we would cook some food on top of it. Now we couldn't find halal food most of the time so we had to just cook things like eggs and beans and fish. Which was nice. You might call it er now but imagine if you had nothing else to eat. Nothing. Nothing. And the only thing you had was a tin of beans. That tin of beans would taste delicious to you. So remember, there are people in the world, like the people in Syria and Palestine and other countries, they have hardly any food. And here in England, we're so lucky we get anything we want, don't we? Okay? So on this journey, we learn that actually, you know, sometimes you have to eat whatever you get. Okay? That's how other people manage in life. Now, we went through France, and we went through France, we then finally, we managed to get on our first Friday. So seven days later, we hit a country called Switzerland. Switzerland is a lovely country with lots of mountains, beautiful mountains and countryside. And there we prayed our Friday prayer. Half of our team stayed in Switzerland, the other half went into another country called Germany. So our teams were in two countries at the same time. How funny is that? Okay. And then we all got together and met up in Germany later on. We had lots of fun in Germany, the people were very nice to us there. Okay, and then we headed off to Switzerland again. I'm not going to show this video because it's upside down. Sorry about that. That's just a video of us going down a mountain, by the way. Here is a video of us going past more mountains. And I'm, you can't hear the volume from it. I'm going to tell you what's, I'm going to tell you what's happening here. On this side where we are cycling, we are in a country called Switzerland. That there is a bridge. We're going to go through the bridge. When we get through the bridge, on the other side, we're going to be in another country. Yep. That bridge is between two countries. On one side, Switzerland, and on the other side, a baby country called Liechtenstein. It's such a small country, it's not even one-tenth or even a quarter of the size of London. It is tiny tiny but it's actually a proper country and there we tried to find somewhere to stay because we were already up near the mountains so we couldn't camp because when you go up in the mountains it gets cold isn't it it gets cold and the clouds come in your way and because it gets so cold you can't stay in a camp like in a tent because you're going to freeze okay in fact one day in France I woke up in France and it was so cold I was shivering inside my tent really badly like somebody was twisting my arms and my legs so when it's so cold then you can't camp. We had to find somewhere to stay for the night. And there was only one problem. There were no hotels in the area. 
In fact, we tried to find a mosque. And there was, the mosque was there, but the mosque wasn't even open. The mosque was closed and nobody could find who had the key. So then we had nowhere to stay. And we had nowhere to stay for the night. One man came up to us and said, I've got somewhere you can stay. And guess what? He didn't even have his own home either. He was from Syria. He was a refugee. He didn't have his own home. But what happened is he used to work in an office in a factory. And in the factory there was an office. Next to the office there was a little lounge, like a settee room with sofas in there. And he said to us, you can sleep in here for the night. But you have to leave early in the morning, uh, before 6 o'clock in the morning. You have to wake up and get out of here. Because my boss is going to be up in the morning at 6 o'clock. And if he sees you all here, there's going to be big trouble with the police. So we all have to gower early in the morning. Okay, we look like a bunch of ghosts, half asleep, walking around like zombies, taking our bikes out slowly, okay? And then we have to carry on cycling into Switzerland, back through the steep, tall mountains. The mountains are so high up, when we go to the top of the mountain, we were above the clouds. And also, some of the brothers, not me, but some of the brothers, they had to go through a cloud, which later on turned into a thunderstorm. So the van, the people in the van, the emergency van that we have, they had to drive back and see where they were in case they needed rescuing before the, thunder hit the, before the lightning hit them. So a few times it was actually quite dangerous. It was so cold, we had to stay at a hotel in the mountains as well because it was just really, really cold. But then, then the next day, we managed to see this lovely scene here. Look at that. Look at the colour of the water. It's like green. Look at that. That water is that ice on that mountain there. It's melting down into a little channel and that water there is green and the water next to it is blue so you've got a blue lake next to a green lake in the same area how cool is that okay so we saw lots of lovely scenery we then on this mountain we went down the mountain and we went at full speed down the mountain really fast but guess what happened you know the people in the van the two men in the van they were driving down on that same road and it was really steep going down and all of a sudden, the brakes on the van stopped working. And the van couldn't slow down. And they had to constantly keep the car moving without crashing into anybody. And the funny thing is, the two van drivers, they're quite chilled out brothers. They're quite fun people, okay? One of the brothers, whenever I meet him, he talks like a bit of a gangster on the streets. So when I meet him, this is what he says. Asalaamu Alaikum, homie. Booyah! Big things, bruv. That's how he speaks to me, okay? He's a really funny person. But for the first time ever on the journey, when, he, when we got to the van, when the van safely got to the bottom of the mountain, we, ca we caught up with them. And when I saw his face, he looked like he'd seen a ghost. For the first time, I didn't see him smiling because he thought he was going to die. Okay? So sometimes we had some close, close shaves and some scary things happened. Then we had to carry on down into Italy. And here is lovely Italy. Look at that. Beautiful lake with lots of lovely mountains and I cycle passes. So here this is a video of me cycling past Look at that lovely crystal clear water Lovely and beautiful what all of us did we took a break here because you were so lovely and peaceful We went to a cafe and we ordered lots of ice cream And we sat back and we ate the ice cream watching the lake We were allowed to weren't we? We could have had anything you wanted and in Italy, they make lovely, lovely ice cream. So if you ever go to Italy, make sure you have their ice cream there. Now, we then had to carry on. We went then to a city called Venice. Has anybody heard of Venice? No. It's a famous city. Can anybody tell you what Venice is famous for? Yes. Thank you. Very well done. It's got lots of canals. It's lots of water. So we were going to cycle on the road up to Venice and touch it and say, here we are in Venice before we got to the water area. When we, were on, when we went on the bridge to get into Venice, the bridge was so dangerous that if our lights on our bikes, on the back of our bikes, if the lights went off, then nobody could see us in the dark on the road. And that meant cars and trains would crash into us. So we had to cycle on that road in the dark. And on that one day, into Venice, the brothers had to cycle 125 miles in one day. Okay? Very dangerous and tough day. But Alhamdulillah, we got there. And then, once we got from Italy, we then we went on a boat called a ferry. We went, we went on a ferry all the way to Greece. And there in Greece, mashallah, a beautiful country, everywhere we went there was fresh fruit. You could pick the grapes off the trees. 
and you could even pick figs and lovely squidgy fruit off the tree. And sometimes we would go to the shops and the people were very nice. We would go to the shop and say, we need some water. And the man would say, no, 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 don't ask me for water. Go up to that hill there and on the hill there's a tap in the stone. Open the tap and you'll get fresh water coming from the mountains, from the lake. Fresh water. And that's where we would get our water from. Everything in Greece was natural. And there in Greece we even met a Muslim lady and the Muslim lady and her family were looking after a camping area where we could all put our tents there. And she cooked us food, she looked after us, and when we were about to leave, she even gave us some money to give in charity when we got to Mecca for Hajj. So lots of, lots of lovely people we got to meet on the way as well. This is a video of me in Greece. More, look at that, more seaside. And we were swimming in there for our bath. We were washing our clothes in there. We even washed our cups and our plates in there as well. Okay, lovely seawater. And that's the country that we got chased by dogs. <laughs> Dangerous dogs. In fact, we were on the beach. We had to sleep on the beach. There was nowhere else to sleep. In the morning, we could hear all these weird animals outside. And we thought, what's that weird sound? And we looked out and we could see there were lots of pigs running on the beach. So we had to quickly get everything, pack it away and get out of there. Okay? Not a very nice place, but anyhow. Okay. Then, from Greece, we went all the way across Greece into a lovely city called Athens. There in Athens, we then went over to Egypt. And then in Egypt, we now had to cycle through the desert, which was quite tough. This is a picture or a video of the Red Sea. Now, it's not actually red, okay? So, that's not why we call it Red Sea. It's called Red Sea for another reason. But there, if I pointed my finger when I was standing there in a the video, if I pointed it straight, I would be pointing at Mecca and Medina in the distance somewhere. So all we now had to do was cross the sea and we would finally get to Saudi Arabia. But we Arabic couldn't go news for service. And they made a video of us on the news. This is a video they made of us on the news. That's us in a city called Alexandria and we are getting bikes ready. So when you, make, when you get a bike, bikes have got lots of bits on it. You've got tyres, you've got brakes, you've got gears, you've got lots of things you've got to make sure are working ready. See those? That's the baby sat -nav I was talking about. Those are little baby computers we put onto our bikes and they tell us which way to go. And that's the doctor man. He is teaching us which way to go through the desert because he can't join us. He has to go back to work. So he said to us, I'll, give you, I'll tell you which way to go and then you have to go off on your way. And then behind us there was a van, inside the van there was a man driving the van, and inside the van there was a big tub full of ice. And inside the ice there were lots of drinks, because the temperature there was 36 degrees. And we had to cycle 90 miles, 90, 90, 90 miles every single day through the desert. And sometimes there was no stopping point in between, there was nothing, just desert. Nothing else, just a road and desert. There was no shop, there was no fish and chip shop, nothing. Nothing you could buy anything from. And there's my friend there, his, his name is Tahir. He's one of the cyclists in that group. He's giving an interview about his journey. And mashallah, he's quite old, but he's really, really strong. Mashallah, really strong. He cycled the, almost the whole journey on his own without needing any help. And he's got six children. Well, I think seven children, mashallah. And our nickname for him is Big Daddy. So that's Big Daddy there, having an interview. And that's all of us there, being told which way to go through the desert. It was the hardest thing I ever did in my whole life, going through the Egyptian desert. It was quite tough. And I'll show you why in a minute. <laughs> من بريطانيا مرورا بأراضي أوروبا مصر آخر محطة وصولهم قبل السعودية وعلى ساحل المتوسط من الإسكندرية شمالا انطلقوا في تلك المحطة الأخيرة الأهم أن هذا الأمر لم يقم به أحد من قبل لذا رأينا أن نرفع درجة الوعي بأننا مسلمون من خلفية مختلفة تجمع كأمة واحدة واستقلوا دراجات هوائية سويا الرحلة نفسها معجزة بأن تدرك بأنك تترك كل شيء خلفك وتنظر إلى الأمام لتصل إلى وجهتك التالية المقصد ليس الحج فقط بل للرحلة مآرب أخرى 
نهدف إلى جمع مليون جنيه استرليني لتوفير سيارات الإسعاف وأجهزة المساعدات الأولية التي يحتاجها السوريون بشدة نحصل على المال عبر وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي منهم من يرسل مقاطع فيديو أو مدونات مرئية أو يرسل إلينا عبر الصفحة ومنهم من يدفع الأموال بنفسه إلينا أي طريقة يعلمها الناس تصل إلينا رحلة طويلة ليست بالهينة أو العادية ما نحاول قوله هنا إننا برحلة الدراجات نعاني نحن حتى لا يضطر منهم في مكان آخر في العالم أن يعانوا نقضي ساعات طويلة مستقلين الدراجات الهوائية وسط تضاريس وأجواء مختلفة ساخنة باردة عالية ومنخفضة لذا فمنهم في مناطق متفرقة بالعالم قد يتعاطفون معنا ليتعاطفوا مع من يعانون حقا لحظات الانتظار تقضى قبل استئناف شق الطريق وشد الرحال لاستكمال الرحلة الموعودة وهم يقتربون قد لا تخطئهم العين ما قطعه طاهر أخطر ورفاقه مسافات طويلة لم ينسوها من بريطانيا مرورا بفرنسا وألمانيا وإيطاليا وسويسرا واليونان ونقاط أخرى حتى مصر ثم إلى الأراضي المقدسة وفي الخاطر مظاهر الحج لم تبعد عنهم حتى قبل الوصول أياما معدودات تفصل عن بدء موسم الحج هذا العام وصل الرفقة البريطانيون حاج This video here I'm going to show you now is a video of us cycling in the desert and, it's, and we are going through a sandstorm Lots of sand being blown around because of lots of wind so it's very hot and very windy okay? and also when I was there It was, so, it was so hot that my bike, all of the bikes that we have, in the frame, there's a special, there's a special little like, um, cup holder. And you put your bottle of drink in there, don't you? Now, what happened was, my bottle of drink, the sun was always shining on the bottle. And it was making the bottle hotter and hotter and hotter. So at one point, I stopped and I thought, oh, I'm really thirsty. I pulled the bottle out to drink the water and the water was so hot, I couldn't drink it. And not only that, the, the sun had melted some of the plastic into the water. So I could taste burnt plastic. I couldn't even drink it. I had to pour it onto the ground. I couldn't even pour it over my body. It was just too hot. And on this day, I woke up with a headache and a stomachache. I shouldn't even have cycled on this day. But I thought, let me try it. But we had to do 96 miles on this day. 96 miles. That's just four miles less than 100 miles on our bikes in the desert. But guess what happened? When we were cycling in the beginning of the day, there was a really powerful wind. And the doctor man in the earlier video, he told us that this wind is the most powerful wind in the whole of Egypt. It is strong, I mean strong. And this wind is blowing in our faces. So we were cycling like really, really slowly. And then all of a sudden, something magic happened. I'm not joking, I'm not joking, honestly it's happened. The wind changed direction. It wasn't blowing in front of us, it was blowing behind us. And it made us go faster and faster. And then, this was what happened. This is my friend videoing me at the back, and I'm, video I'm cycling at the front, that's me in the distance there. And look what happens. Look, notice one thing. I'm not moving my legs very fast, but I'm still moving fast. Look at how everything is rushing past me. Wow! <laughs> Literally riding through a sandstorm. Ooh. Oh. Ah, oh, I got sand in my face and in my mouth. Ah. Oh. Sandstorm in Egypt. Ooh. Cuz this sand are hitting us. About 30 miles an hour. Yep. Painful. <sighs> Don't forget to sponsor us. Hajiride.com. And look, he shows his computer on his bike, uh, and that computer is telling us. 
that we are moving around 22 miles an hour just by sitting on my bike. Look how slow my legs are. Look how fast I'm moving. That wind, that sandstorm is pushing me to go faster and faster. And we went on a maximum speed of 33 miles an hour. That's what his computer is telling us. Exactly, I'm not, my legs are not moving. Look at that, I'm just sitting on it. That wind made it so that I just had to sit on my bike and move my legs for a bit. And Alhamdulillah, 96 miles later, we got there. 96 miles in 37 degrees heat. How long do you think it took us? Who wants to guess how many hours or days it took us to get through that desert? Who wants to have a guess? Yes. 20, 20 hours. Ooh, good try, good try. Not the answer, good try. Yes. 24. 24, good try, good try. Yes. Two days. Two days, ooh, okay. That's a long time. Um, da, da, da. Right at the back with the green top. How long do you think it took? Hours. Sorry? 13 hours. 13 hours? Ooh, that sounds a bit brave. Okay, maybe, maybe. Not the answer though. Oh, yes. Five hours? This isn't a Superman logo, you know. I'm not Superman. But you know what? You're right. We did it in five hours. Five hours it took. That's why we were doing an average speed of 20 miles an hour. Just under 20 miles an hour. That means in five hours, we got to the other city. And guess what else? This is even more amazing. In the middle of the desert, most likely you wouldn't find any mosque. So we couldn't pray our Friday Juma prayers. But guess what? They were cycling past a factory, and the factory had a prayer room, and all the people that stopped for prayer, for prayer time. So some of the brothers who were cycling, they heard the Adhan. In the middle of the desert, they jumped off their bikes, because we already had wudu. We would always try to have wudu, and be clean when we were cycling. So they jumped in, they prayed their Juma prayers in the middle of the desert. How cool is that? So Allah made that journey. I should have fallen off my bike and gone to hospital because it was so hot. But Alhamdulillah, I sat on my bike and just chilled all the way. And then we finally got to the other city. I went there, had a shower, wore some clean clothes. I was absolutely fine. My headache and stomach kick had gone. That was so, so amazing. Finally, in the end, we then went over to Saudi Arabia because the cycling in Egypt was finished. And in Saudi Arabia, Alhamdulillah, we had lots of people helping us. This is... The, the news channel and the um, cy Saudi cycling team, they've all given us lovely bikes that we can use. They're giving us all things that we need, water and everything. They sent two police cars, one behind us and one in front of us to make sure nobody hit us. And also an ambulance in case anybody got hurt. And also there was a TV camera crew following us on this last part of the journey. This is the man who was leading the camera crew. He's from the Arabic news channel. Uh, this is a very exciting opportunity for Saudi Arabia. Uh, we are the land of the two holy mosques. And to have uh, such a, an esteemed team of, uh, of riders from, uh, from East London visiting us here um, has really been a blessing all around. we got to move now because we're going to go off and start hitting, uh, hitting the road on the bicycles approximately 40, 45 kilometers all the way to Medina. In my dreams I make my way to Medina the home and chosen place of our beloved prophet, where all I feel is peace. And so much joy around, no better place for me. Yeah. I'm walking past in a short while. I've got the green helmet, I've got a different helmet. There's me. There I am. Okay, now. This next video, this is a very important video. This video is going to show us the end of the journey. Okay? Got a question? Yes? Yeah, because you know the sandstorm earlier? That sandstorm, you might find a bit of the sandstorm in here if you look carefully. The sandstorm is in here. How cool is that? I've never, I never watched these when I came back. I kept them like that, so I want everybody to see how dusty they are. I can see the sand inside them, okay? Righty, we're gonna show the video now, and this is the final part of the journey. We're all together going on this road, and long time ago, our Prophet Muhammad 
When he went to Medina, he was going on this very same road, which was quite cool. Okay, here we are all together now. Alhamdulillah, we have Abdul Wahid back and Brother Shamsuddin. Inshallah, we're on our last stretch. We're going to Medina now. So, please remember us in your duas. Humanate UK, Hajaride.com. Give bright. Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi نرحب بالاخوه البريطانيين واحنا سعيدين جدا في المملكه العربيه السعوديه تحديدا من المدينه المنوره سعيدين جدا لاستقبالهم اسال الله عز وجل ان يتقبل منهم كل خطوه خطوها الى هذه الاماكن الطيبه المباركه شكرا لكم الله اكبر امين Never could we have imagined a reception like that. Oh yeah! So, uh, yeah, Allah So here we are, in Medina. MashaAllah, the Saudis have given us a full police escort. Welcoming! Welcoming! Alhamdulillah, the whole crew is behind us. MashaAllah! Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's so hot, my eyes are stinging. But I can't close them because I'm just so happy as to where I am. I'm just enjoying it. Salaam alaikum! The local, the local people literally, you know, like honking, happy, shouting support to us all the way. MashaAllah, may Allah preserve the memory. Friday now, at Hadri, don't give right, don't call. Sponsored by Bunker Travels, specialist in Hadri, by the Ministry of Hadri, Saudi Arabia. The brothers at Hazrat.com have finally made it from Master Allah. Flowers, where did you pick those funny hey, flowers up from? Well, before we go to the masjid, there was a little surprise that they put for us. As we were coming into the city of Medina, we saw the city there, and then we were going towards the masjid, and then somebody said, go this way, go this way. And we turned into a different direction, and there was a big square in the, between the streets. And in the middle of the square, in the middle of the square, there was a big welcome parade for us. And this is the welcome parade that they made for us. They had the news channels there, they had somebody singing, songs, Islamic songs live, so it wasn't a recorded song, it was a man with the microphone singing songs and people with the drums to making like a lovely like beat and he was also singing a famous song you might even recognize. <laughs> Okay, so then after that, we went then for the Hajj, and then, mashallah, we got to see this lovely image. This was what I was waiting for. My dream came true. As a young boy, I dreamed of being able to see the Kaaba in Hajj. And here I am in the days of Hajj, and seeing the Kaaba with thousands of people around in the white marble. My dream finally came true all those years later, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Look at that lovely feeling. People from around the world, from every single country, from Finland, Iceland, Australia, Kyrgyzstan, South America, Japan, China, England, everybody, mashallah, got there together for the Hajj. It was a wonderful, amazing feeling, okay? Righty, yeah. we're going to have a few questions before we finish off now. Who's got questions, please? I'm going to answer as many of them as I can. Da -da. Yes. Yep, yep, you. Um, the best thing I've ever done in my life. Best journey I've ever made in my life. The toughest journey? Yes. Definitely tough. Okay? But Alhamdulillah, I'm very glad I did it. Let's... Okay. Come on. Da, da, da. Go to the front with the pinky job. Yep. How many? At the mosque in Medina. Uh, in Medina, we stayed there for only five days because you had to get there for Hajj. So then after that, we then went for Makkah. We stayed in Makkah for two and a half weeks. Okay? Jazakallah. Let's see. Da, 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 da. On this side now. Go there, yeah. Good question, actually. When I got to Medina, I wasn't crying. And you know the reason why? It was because I wanted to see the Kaaba. Medina was amazing. I love Medina. It's amazing. As soon as you go into the masjid, it feels nice and peaceful and calm. You can just lie back and just say, ah. It feels so nice. It feels so nice and peaceful. Allah has made it a lovely, blessed place. But I wanted to get to the Kaaba as well. So what happened is I waited and waited and waited. When I got to the Kaaba, I stood there for hours. I stood there and stood there and stood there crying out of happiness. Like, oh my Allah, I've got here now. It was so amazing. Yeah? Okay. On this side now, let's see. There's so many hands here. You there, the one with the lovely hat? Oh, the girl with the hat. Yeah, that's you, yeah. Nice and loudly. Good question. We didn't actually go back on our bikes. Something happened when we went to one of the countries. One of the countries we went to, they wouldn't let us take our bikes out of the airport. So our bikes got stuck in the airport and we had to get new bikes to finish the journey. So when I got back to England, my bike was still stuck in the airport. <laughs> yep, it was still stuck in the airport because they just, they just sent it back. They, they wouldn't let us move it. So it was stuck in Greece, in Athens airport. So we had to pay somebody some money and say, excuse me, if you want our bikes back, can you send them back to England? So I came back here before my bike did. And my bike was the star and the hero of the show. So I was missing my bike a lot. Okay? So I was glad to have my bike back in the end. Sorry? One second. One second. Oh, who else? Who else asked to this side? This side now? Da -da. Yep, go on. Uh, long story. Long, long story. They wouldn't allow some of the things to be taken on one of the planes. And the bikes, because they were big boxes, then some of the boxes that couldn't be taken on one of the planes. That's why. So we have to then get some another plane to take them back. Okay? Like this side again. <gasps> da, da, da. There's a boy all the way at the back, right at the back. Sorry? The baddest weather. Ooh. Um, the Egyptian sandstorm was very tough. But also in Switzerland, there was a massive thunderstorm. I mean huge. The sky was ripping apart all the time. And that was quite severe. And on that night, we couldn't stay in a hotel. We, we couldn't stay in our tents. So Alhamdulillah, we managed to find a mosque in Switzerland. And we stayed in the mosque for the night. Okay? That was the worst weather we got. It was very hot and very cold. When we were in Switzerland, we went through snow. We went through thunderstorms. We went through sandstorms. We went through every single kind of weather you could think of, in fact. Okay? Righty, this side now. Da, da, da. Let's see. Um, at the back, the one of the yellow. Yeah, the one of the yellow bag. Yeah. Um, how much money did you spend? How much money did you spend? Good question. Well, when only a person goes for Hajj, they normally have to spend around five thousand pounds, maybe a bit more. For us, some people thought that because we were going on our bikes, it might be cheaper. Actually, it costs more. It costs us each around £6,000. So it wasn't cheap. 
But it was fun. It was a fun way of getting there. So if somebody thinks, let me go on my bike and go all the way there and I'll save a lot of money, you might not actually save a lot of money. And once you get to Hajj, you still have to pay the government in Saudi Arabia to let you stay and do the Hajj as well. So it costs quite a lot in the end. Yep. Let's see on this side now. Ooh, at the front, yep, yep. Um, so long as I was with her, because <laughs> she's a naughty little girl, she can get in trouble. Now, I'm only joking. Now, I, I, th I think it's something that if a person can do, it would be a nice thing to do. Uh, and sometimes you might even think that maybe in the future there might, there might be a family head ride. You never know. Because it was quite dangerous, we couldn't take our families with us. So we couldn't take our wives and our children on this journey, because it would have been a lot of danger on the journey. So maybe, maybe, we might do one in the future where some people can stay in a car and drive with us and we can do all the cycling and then you can take turns doing the cycling as well. So if my daughter did it, I wouldn't mind her doing it, but I would obviously, naturally as a parent, I would want to make sure she was safe. If you think, my, put it this way, my mum and, and dad, they were like literally scared for my life. My mum and dad would always say to me, are you okay? Where are you? Which country are you in? Are you sure you're right? Are you sure you're not being hurt? Are you not telling your mummy? Like that. I'm a grown man. I'm in my mid-30s, okay, I'm 35, alhamdulillah, and even now my mum still, when I go to her house, she won't let me do my own ironing. She won't even let me cook anything. She'll say, hands off. And I say, mummy, I'm a grown man. And my mum says to me, but you're always my little baby. Okay, so maybe I think the same thing applies with my daughter. Yeah. Okay, this side now. Righty. Um, da -da -da. Oh, somebody at the, all at the back, yep. Yeah. All at the back. The boy at the back, the boy at the back. Hiding behind somebody there. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Nice and loudly. How many were? Kaaba. The Kaaba. Okay. Obviously, to go inside the Kaaba, very few people can go inside. Very few people can go inside. So, the around the Kaaba, at any one time, you might find around 50,000 people are there. And that's just in the courtyard. And then in the rest of the masjid, you've got another four to 500,000. In the time of Hajj, it goes up to more than 2 million. That's a lot of people there, isn't there? Yeah? Okay. Okay, we'll round it off, yeah? Okay, we don't have time for any more questions. Although, I'd like somebody who asked me a question about something earlier on, about how much you raise. Would you like to repeat the question, please? Alhamdulillah, mashaAllah, the brothers and sisters who supported us in the UK and around the world. All together, Alhamdulillah, we checked two weeks ago, and my friend who works for that charity, he said to me that so far we have raised £380,000. Alhamdulillah. And that is an hour doing, that is mashaAllah, the brothers and sisters who supported us. So I'm actually going to finish it there by saying that this journey wasn't eight men and, uh, or eight, ten men in their, in their bikes. This was everybody who supported us, you were all with us. We were just the ones doing the cycling. Everybody out there, mashallah, lots of mums and dads did duas for us. People around the world on social media. I got messages from Panama, from Algeria, from different countries around the world. People are saying, well done, you got there. It was amazing. You know that video when you got to the masjid? There were grown men who told me they cried when they saw that. Okay, so lots of people were very supportive of us. So all of you together, inshallah, you'll all share the reward of that charity and of the Hajj as well. And inshallah, you never know, one day there may be people cycling to Hajj in this room right now. Because when I was 20, 21 years ago, I was your age. I didn't think I was going to cycle to Hajj, but alhamdulillah, here I am able to tell a story. Inshallah, you never know which one of you may be the next one. So, may Allah bless you all. Jazakumullah to you all for listening. I'm so sorry I can't answer all of your questions. I'd love to, but maybe inshallah later on another time, okay? Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Sheikh. Um, uh, can Allah we have a morning. round of a mashallah? Okay. <laughs> Okay, um... It's been an amazing journey, absolutely amazing journey. We've been through um, rain, we've been through sunshine, we've been through sandstorms, we've been through um, 
uh, the Swiss Alps. Uh, we've done things that um, I probably, uh, you know, athletic people would probably normally do. We're not athletic in that sense. Uh, we, we're blessed that we've got Allah with us and he's made it easy for us this journey. Um, you know, because to, to go every single day, 100 miles, you know, 150, 200 kilometers every single day, for five weeks is uh, a bit unheard of really, but he's given us the strength to uh, carry on and do this. Alhamdulillah, we're very blessed. When people walk past us and they stop and they say, oh, you're the herd riders. Uh, yesterday we were at the airport and a young little boy came up to us from Dubai and he said to us, oh, you're the herd riders. And uh, we're just amazed because we weren't even dressed like herd riders, but he said recognize us. So it's nice to know that word's gone out. We didn't do it for name or for show but alhamdulillah people are recognizing us and making a lot of support and dua for us so it's very encouraging and it helps us do extra when we're finding it hard <laughs>